Today, I'll be showing you how to change your coolant, flush your system, change your radiator hoses, change your heater hoses, change your water pump, and your thermostat. Big one, so let's get to it. Hey, thanks very much for being here and for supporting the channel. Today, we've got a pretty big one. We're going to overhaul the cooling system on this Ford Focus Mark 1. Now, I'm doing all of these jobs because the car's got a 100,000 miles on it, it's 18 years old, and I've got a couple of leaks. I've got a thermostat housing leak, and I'm pretty sure that some of my hoses are not too far behind. So while I'm in there and changing my thermostat housing, I'm going to go ahead and change the radiator hoses, I'm going to change the heater hoses, I'm going to change the water pump, I'm going to change the thermostat and of course the thermostat housing and I'll flush the whole system. So no matter what part of the cooling system you need to fix or upgrade on your focus, I'm hoping that this video will help you out. Alright, this is going to be a big one. It's early in the morning and I'm pretty sure this is going to take me most of the day. So enough chit chat, let's get to it. I'll just note as well that the reason I'm not swapping the radiator is because mine looks fairly new so I'm leaving that in. But I'll make sure to create a radiator swap video if I ever need to do that on this car. So with the hoses I've decided to replace them all because I know that some of them were close to failing. And usually if one hose fails and your other hoses are the same age, you can bet that those other hoses are not far behind from failing as well. And since I decided to do all of this, I may as well upgrade to a silicone hose set. You can use rubber hoses if you prefer, or if you'd like a silicone set like this one, I'll leave a link in the description for you. I went with red hoses because the coolant that this car takes is red in colour, and this way I can always look under the engine bay and spot my coolant system hoses straight away since they match the colour of the coolant in the car. I'm not sure what state the water pump is in so I'm going to replace that. Finally, I'll be swapping the part that caused me to do all of this work in the first place, which is the thermostat housing. Also, while I'm in here, I may as well swap out the thermostat. It would be silly not to since it plays such an important part in keeping your engine at the right temperature and since I have the coolant drained and the hoses disconnected anyway. Even if you're not swapping all of these parts out on your car, I hope that you can use sections of this video to just change the parts you need to on your cooling system. But before all of this, the first thing we'll need to do is drain the coolant and flush the whole system and to do that we need to get the car in the air so let's go we're going to need some access now so remove the wheel and unscrew this plastic shroud using a 10mm socket. At the top of the engine, also make sure to disconnect and remove the battery, as well as the airbox assembly. Finally, move the HT leads out of the way and disconnect and remove the distributor. You can find videos on how to do all of this on my channel, so go ahead and follow those videos if you need to, and then come back here. With all of that done, we're ready to drain the coolant. Find your bottom radiator hose on the engine side of the radiator, remove the clip out of the way and pull back the hose to drain the coolant into a bucket. You want to collect the old coolant and take it away to be recycled. Don't flush it down the drain or you'll end up with mutant rats in your sewer. With the coolant drained, I'm going to disconnect the top hose at the thermostat to flush out the radiator. To do this, attach a garden hose or water nozzle to the top hose and pump water through the radiator. Now that your radiator is nice and clean, let's flush the engine of old coolant as well. To do this, you'll need to remove your power steering hose out of the way with an 8mm socket, like so. Then using a T25 socket, go ahead and disconnect the thermostat cover from the housing. So there is your thermostat, and to get it out, all you need to do is pry it out with a screwdriver. Now that it's out of the way, you have an open entry into the engine's cooling system. To flush out everything in there, just reattach the thermostat cover, reattach your top radiator hose, and attach your garden hose to the radiator hose and start pumping the water. 
do this for a few minutes until the water that comes out of the bottom radiator hose is nice and clean. That will mean that your engine has been flushed clean. When you're happy with that, go ahead and remove the top radiator hose along with the rest of the hoses that lead to your thermostat housing. This back hose here leads to the heater core, so remove that and the other hose attached to the heater core is this one. Once you have both of those hoses disconnected, take one of them and point it into the bucket. Then, using the other hose, pump water through the system to flush out your heater core. If you can pulse the water pressure to loosen any built up gunk, that helps. And with that done, your entire system should be flush clean. That's your radiator, your engine and your heater core. So it's time to move on. Now that all the hoses are off, it's time to change out the thermostat housing. To do this is really simple. All you need to do is remove three bolts and it should come off. They are 10 mm bolts by the way. Whoops! <laughs> Looks like my old thermostat went for a swim. Now that the housing is out of the way, this is a great time to check the condition of your PCV valve and hoses since you have good access here. Go ahead and replace your PCV valve or any hoses you may need to now. Also, clean up the general area now so that everything goes back in nice and clean. Do this now because once everything is back on, access to this area of the engine is very tight. To make sure the new housing seals properly, give the mating surface a scrub. I've used a razor scraper and some fine sandpaper, but you'll find several other things also work such as steel wool or scotch bright pads. Okay, everything is looking good here, so let's get the new thermostat housing and thermostat ready. With the thermostat, go ahead and position the new rubber seal around the outer edge. Then, taking the new thermostat housing, position the thermostat inside the housing in a way so that the top of the housing aligns with the hole in the thermostat. So the hole in the thermostat points to the top, like this. Then, take your thermostat cover and position it like so. With that ready, take the three cover bolts and screw them in. Setting the tension to 10 Newton meters each. With the thermostat housing assembly now ready, take it to your car and bolt up the three 10mm bolts, setting the tension to 20 Newton meters. And with that, the thermostat housing leak should now be sorted. The Ford Focus water pump is driven by the accessory belt, so we'll need to take that off first. And to do that, we slacken the tension at the belt tensioner located here. But before we do that, let's loosen the bolts on the water pump pulley now. So to get good access to the water pump pulley bolts, go ahead and remove the inner wheel guard. If your inner guard is as filled up with dirt as mine is, take the time now to clean out this area because this part of the car is known to rust. I've made a video on how to prevent rust in these cars, so make sure you check that out. There is a link to the video in the description. Once you're ready to move forward with the water pump, Take a 10mm spanner and loosen the pulley bolts. Once you have them all loose, it's time to take the accessory belt off the car. The best way I've found to do this is to use a 15mm spanner on the tensioner bolt with a ring spanner put on the end of that for extra leverage. Then simply push forward and you should now be able to slide the belt off. With the belt out of the way, you will be able to remove the water pump pulley bolts by hand and remove the pulley. giving you full access to the four water pump pulley bolts. So take an 8mm socket and undo the four bolts. With those removed, you should now be able to wriggle out the water pump from its housing. And right about at this point, you will realize that the water pump won't come out. There just isn't enough room past the chassis rails. There is only one thing for it, you will have to take the engine mount off. To do this, you will need to undo these bolts here. 
and support your engine on a jack. Now that the engine is supported, go ahead and take off your engine mount. As you can see, my engine mount was leaking fluid, so I actually went ahead and replaced this mount, plus the other two mounts on this car while I had everything apart. If you want to see my how-to video on how to replace all the engine mounts on this car, I'll leave a link for you in the description so that you can also do that if you need to. So now that the engine is supported on a jack, I can lower the engine just enough to be able to lift the water pump out, just like so. Now I have to say, there is a lot of gasket sealing on this water pump and whoever did this made quite a mess. I'm going to have to clean this up before I can put the new water pump in but make sure you do not add gasket sealing to your water pump. You do not need to do this because the rubber o-ring around the new water pump should be plenty to stop any leaks. Now that the area is nice and clean, go ahead and put the new water pump in Insert the four 8mm screws and torque the water pump down to 18 Newton meters. With that done, reattach your water pump pulley. To stop the pulley from spinning, use a spanner or screwdriver to hold the pulley like this and then tighten the bolts down. Okay, the water pump is in, so the last thing to do will be to reattach the accessory belt. To do that, you will use the same trick as before. Use a 15mm spanner on the tensioner bolt and add an extension to the end of it so that you have good leverage. Then with your belt ready and positioned around your pulleys, take up the tension and slide the belt over the water pump like so. Check that everything is on properly and release the tension. Do one final check of everything and you should be good to go. Finally, let's put the engine mount back on now. You will see that I have a new engine mount here because my old one was leaking. Again, check the description of this video for a link on how to change all of your engine mounts. But once the mount is back on, you can lower the jack and you can call the water pump done. All right, with the water pump, thermostat and thermostat housing now all sorted, let's put some new hoses on the car. This is the silicone set you can find in the video description below. You have your top and bottom radiator hoses, then you have your heater hoses on the transmission side, and finally, a collection of small hoses running to and from the thermostat housing, radiator and coolant bottle. To start with, remember the hoses used to flush the heater core? We're going to take them off right now. Then lining up old and new to make sure we have the right hoses, starting with the bottom hose, slide it on and tighten the clamp. Then take the top hose and do the same with that. On the other end, slide the bottom hose into the back of the thermostat housing and tighten it up. Next, we'll remove the old hose running from the top of the rad to the bottom of the thermostat housing, put the new hose on, and tighten that up. Now let's attach the long hose from the heater core to the top of the rad and tighten it up. Next, let's attach the top radiator hose to the thermostat and the top of the radiator and tighten it up. And with that, the transmission side coolant hoses are pretty much done. Let's start working on the engine side hoses now. And this long hose here runs all the way to the coolant bottle. So let's disconnect that and move it out of the way for now. The hose next to that on the coolant bottle runs into the top of the radiator here. So let's go ahead and unclip that from the radiator. Mine was a little stubborn, but after a bit of maneuvering, I got it out. Okay, with the two small coolant bottle hoses loose, it's time to remove the large hose on the coolant bottle. And with that unclipped, just unscrew the coolant bottle using a 10mm socket and the bottle should lift out. With the bottle out of the way, you'll see the large hose running to the bottom of the radiator. We'll just unclip that and pull it out of the way. At this point, take a minute to look at where all the hoses go so that you can plug the new hoses into the right spots in a minute. 
But before we do any of that, let's remove the last hose, which is the lower radiator hose on the engine side. This is a Y-shaped hose that also goes into the water pump here. So let's go ahead and unclip the hose from the pump, then from the top of the radiator, wriggle this hose which was clearly failing free and pull it out from the car. So take a look, this is why I like to spend a bit of extra money when I do a big job like this and replace parts that are due to fail. I had no idea my lower radiator hose was this bad until I took it out and it was clearly on its way to letting go in a big way. So I'm glad I bought a hose set because I can now replace this with a brand new hose. With the water pump housing now all cleaned up, I went ahead and installed the new Y pipe. Space was too limited for me to film the install, but basically you reattach the pipe to the bottom of the radiator, the water pump and to the top of the radiator. Next, let's position the three hoses going to the coolant bottle. The large one goes underneath to the bottom of the rad and runs to the coolant bottle. The shorter small hose goes to the top of the rad and to the coolant bottle. And the long small hose runs from the coolant bottle to the thermostat housing. So attaching the large hose to the bottom of the rad and all buttoned up. Then running the top end to the coolant bottle which can now go back in the car and all buttoned up. Let's now secure the coolant bottle back on the car with a 10mm bolt and install the small short hose from the coolant bottle to the top of the radiator. With that all done and clipped in, we have one more hose to go. This is the longest hose and it runs from the top of the radiator to the top of the thermostat housing. Let's slide it on to the thermostat housing, tighten it onto the coolant bottle, clip everything in and check that everything is tightened down and guess what, the hoses are in. With all of that looking great, let's start putting the car back together. Start with reinstalling your distributor and leads. You can follow the link to the video I made on these in the description below. Then reattach your power steering hose and the throttle cable. Reinstall your splash guard and then your belt guard. Put your air intake and battery back in. Links to the videos in the description and we're done. Or are we? So right about now you should be feeling pretty good. Everything's buttoned up, tightened down, torqued down, in the car, ready to go, right? Have we done everything? What do you think? Don't forget to put coolant in your car. You start your car without that, big problem. <laughs> so take your time. I know it's probably late, you're probably tired, you want to get this thing buttoned up and ready to go, but just check everything twice. Make sure everything's tight and put coolant in your car. <laughs> Yep, that's right. I got so excited about finishing up, I almost forgot the coolant. So as I said before, the coolant you'll want to use in a Focus Mark 1 2 liter engine is the red stuff, not the green stuff. As you can see, this brand makes it 10 liters. So what I'll do is pour 3 liters in and fill up the rest of the coolant system with demineralized water, making a total of about 6 liters. So we're aiming for a 50-50 mix. The reason you want to put the coolant in first is because there is already water in your system. Remember how we flushed out everything? Well, all that water is still sitting in there, so adding the coolant in first will guarantee that the right amount of coolant ends up in your car. When you pour in the coolant, make sure you go slowly. A small trickle will allow water bubbles to rise up and escape from your lines, whereas if you just pour it in there fast, air and liquid will mix, guaranteeing that you will end up with some air pockets. Once the coolant is in, go ahead and top things up with water to a reasonable level. Don't fill the system all the way up, because firstly, you'll want some room in case the coolant level rises as the car heats up. But basically, we're now ready to start the car. First, give your hoses a good squeeze to force any air pockets out. Check that all your hoses are on nice and tight, and it's time to start the car. As the car is running and the temperature is rising, keep checking all of your hoses for any leaks. 
you'll probably notice that the water level rises a little as things heat up and then probably fall again as the car comes to temperature and the thermostat opens. This is just the system purging itself of any air bubbles, so go ahead and top things up with water as you need to. Then once you're happy with the water level, put the coolant cap back on to allow the system to pressurize. As a final point, make sure you run your heater to get the new coolant circulating through your heater core. At this point, your water level will probably drop again, but that's okay, we can top this up soon. For now, turn your car off, reattach the wheel you probably still have off from the time when you change your water pump, drop the car off the jacks, and top up your coolant to the max level once the coolant is cold enough to let the cap be opened again. And that's it, one epic coolant system overhaul is now complete. If you followed this all the way through, thanks for sticking around this long and congratulations on doing this job as well if you followed along with your car. Time to go for a drive. So there it is, job done. Everything looks good. I've been driving around for about half an hour now. Temps look good, the engine hasn't blown up, everything. <laughs> everything's fine so yeah that was a big one but um, yeah worth doing all in all not too hard just lots of little steps and lots of care taken with jobs this big you just want to take your time and when you get to the end make sure you don't rush anything it can be quite tempting to um, you know just slap everything back together and be done with it but that's the most likely time that you're going to make a mistake when you're putting things back together because you might be tired it was a big day lots of things to pay attention to so take your time make sure you don't forget anything double check everything and you should be fine so I hope you liked this video and if you did click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from the channel now the other thing is leave a comment below, tell me what you thought and tell me if I've forgotten something or if you would have done something different. I make these videos for everyone so if you've got a comment that would um, you know, improve the process of what I've just gone through, if you think there's a better way of doing something, I want you to write it below because I want these videos to be a definitive guide for everybody so besides the video itself, I want the comments to help people out. So I hope you like what you saw, but enough chit chat, go ahead and try this yourself on your car.